Hey world, it's being able to come back with another video, family. If I'm only come back with this video, um, because I know it's election time, and there's so much going on right now that people are really uh, getting immersed with all of this nonsense about uh, asteroids hitting the Earth. You dig NASA uh, climate change and and the threat of two two what. Two thirds of the birds going extinct if the uh, climate rises, what, 5.4 degrees. Now, all of this stuff, you know, and of course they said, you know, you got CERN, you have HARP, right? You have all of these different distractions that the uh, those that are in power give us to pontificate on and keep, you, keep your mind off of what's more important. I'm going to be honest with you, family. If you don't think for one minute that we are what they call slaves, then you got to ask yourself, can you survive and take care of your family and you do not have to work? Now, that question can be two-sided because if you've already been in a situation where you've been able to pay yourself first, right, and you was able to invest because remember, as slaves, that whole word has been pretty much associated with just one group of people, Afro-melanated people. And it just blows me away that the people in America don't realize how they are particularly slaves to corporations. These corporations can come in, set up shop, hire you, fire you, move their shop overseas, and nothing done, okay? Then you have to get a job, or you have to try to file for unemployment. So then the government is pretty much taking care of you. So either you're working for corporations or you're working for the government. Now let's say, well, hey, you know, I want to be an entrepreneur. You know, I'm going to have to start my own business. I can dig that. And that's what your mindset should be in reference to gaining wealth. But let's look at it from a realistic standpoint. If you broke and you have no capital, no resources, no money, but you want to start a business, how are you going to do it? You have to go to the banks to get finance, right? And of course, when, they, when you get finance through the banks, they're going to charge you this exorbitant interest rates, right? And so where is the freedom? Where is you can say, you know what? I'm not working. I'm just going to live off the land. And Oh, that's right. You can't live off the land because you don't own the land which is really crazy to me because how is it that an individual can stay claim and own land that doesn't belong to him? How are you going to say, well, this is my land? That's ridiculous. The most high blessed us with all of this land. Okay. And these same people are telling us that we're destroying a man, destroying the earth because of global warming and climate change. Think about how ridiculous that is. Global warming, but you have you can go up north right now, and it's cold. And then another month or two, there's going to be snow everywhere. We are so cognitively dissonant. It blows me away, family. Global warming. And they tell you that there were, what, four asteroids that were, you know, making its way toward Earth. How is that possible if Earth is spinning at 1,000 miles per hour? And infinitely in space, following the sun, the sun is supposed to be traveling at 450,000 miles per hour. How do they know asteroids can hit, hit Earth? What type of technology do they have to have that type of technology where they know a, a, a asteroid going to hit the Earth when the Earth is constantly spinning and constantly moving? Have you ever, have you ever wondered why? Other meteors and meteorites and all of that stuff never hit the Earth or never run into satellites or never collide into satellites. Okay? So it's all diversions. Global warming, climate change, asteroids hitting the Earth. Okay? When the real issues are healthcare, you know, your wages working for these corporations not uh, yearly keeping up with inflation. Um, your retirement benefits are not, you're not even in control of your retirement benefits. Think about that for a minute. 
the government tells you that how much you can save, you know, with the new tax, with the new tax codes, uh, you know, if you got a 401 or 403 or 457 or IRA for that matter, there's only so much money that you can contribute to your IRA or to your retirement. Think about that. What if I want to contribute 60,000 or 50,000? Oh no, you can't do that. Only 19,000 or 25,000 or 7,000 come to IRAs. See, but we don't have any pushback to that. No pushback. No type of understanding that the politicians <clears throat> are only in power to keep the masses confused and misinformed because the biggest deficit, the biggest detriment rather to this whole political system is the fact that the masses of voters are uninformed voters. The masses of voters have no clue how the legislative branch, the judicial branch, and the uh, executive branch works. Have no clue that these three branches, you know, of government supposed to have checks and balances. And one branch of government, which is the legislative branch, they're supposed to make the laws. Now, shouldn't if you're making laws, these laws should be to protect those that put you in office? Well, when you have pharmaceutical companies that's able to, you know, have prescription drugs at a price that's 100 to 125% higher than these same drugs that are sold overseas, and nobody says anything about that. You know why? Because the pharmaceutical companies with those long pockets, Merck, uh, uh, Abbey, it's a couple of other ones that are worth that have billion dollar market capitalization. So if they want to get certain drugs passed through the FDA or whatever, they just drop millions of dollars to the politicians and the politicians pass the law and have the drugs on the market. While one out of four Americans have a tough time affording the prescription drugs. So just think about this for a minute, family. Imagine if the politicians made sure that everyone had health care, right? The politicians made sure that it was policy, it was the law that as an employee working for a company, that company had to make sure that every year that they gain profits, their employees gain profits in the form of a raise that would be comparable to inflation. If inflation is 2% every year, then everyone should be getting a 2% raise. Now, you know, the GDP will actually explode every year because the more money you give people, the more they're going to be able to spend money. Okay? And then retirement. Politicians. Those are just three things that as politicians, you should make sure that your constituents, that the people that vote for you, these are the three things that you make sure they have. Adequate, appropriate health care. Okay? Wages that keep up with inflation. Okay. And lastly, a retirement plan that's going to allow individuals to live a life or quality of life comparable to those that make the same amount of money. It's no it's not right to have someone work 30, 40 years and make no more than twenty, twenty five thousand dollars a year, and then when they retire or when they gain when they're supposed to get social security, there's no way they can survive off of it because for twenty, thirty years they've only been you know, able to just put back 6% or 7%. So politicians, if you really care about the constituents, you really care about those that are voting for you, those are just three things. Adequate health care, wages comparable to inflation, and a retirement plan that's going to make sure your quality of life isn't, isn't affected by, by inflation. All right? So if you want to come back, make sure you hit the like button, the uh, subscribe button as well as the share button. And uh, in the meantime, between time and the most high side to bring you joy and being with us out of 5,000.